Welcome back to homesteading with the Zimmermans. Um, I may be the only Zimmerman that shows up in today's video because spring break is over. The kids are back in school. And even though the calendar says it's spring, we sure have not been able to do very many spring-like activities. Um, today is dreary and rainy and we have a couple very busy days coming up and leading into the weekend. Um, so today I'm trying to think about things that I can do to make meals easier and make sure that meals are still filling and that my family still feels loved even though I am busy with other things. So my family can easily get um, discouraged or get they just seem to not like when I, when they feel like I've just slapped some food together and put it on the table. So they feel more loved if the meals that I serve seem to have taken a lot of effort. So one of the things that I'm going to do, and I'm going to show it in today's video, and it's a very, very simple way, in very economical way to take a very simple homestead meal to the next level and that is breadsticks. So I'm gonna make a triple batch of breadsticks and I'm gonna put them, put some in the freezer and I'm gonna use them. The way I'll use them is to dress up any simple meal of soup or casserole um, and just serve some breadsticks with it and everybody feels like I've gone to a lot of effort when I really haven't. So most of our meals this time of year consist of food from our freezer and cans and food that we've grown and preserved here on the homestead. So things like a meat and a vegetable um, and a lot of dairy, a lot of cheese, a lot of yogurt, um, and then a lot of things with eggs because we're getting plenty of eggs. And I don't know about your family, but my family likes to mix things up and add different things to their daily diet um, because they just get tired of it. But anyway, I'm rambling. I'm gonna get busy making these breadsticks and I hope that you stick around to leave a comment and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, we appreciate every one of you that are here. Okay, like I said, I'm making a triple recipe um, but I will link in the description to a printable single batch recipe. So I've got six cups of water and I need three tablespoons of sugar. And then I need two, four, six tablespoons of yeast. Two, three, four, five, and six. And now I'm just gonna mix this together. So we're just gonna let this set and give the yeast a chance to dissolve and become active. So I usually let it set for about five to 10 minutes. Well, that didn't take long at all. I think it was only like five minutes. So now I need one teaspoon of salt per recipe. So I'm gonna add three teaspoons of salt. And you can add any kind of seasoning that you would like as well. One, two, three, four. So now I'm gonna mix this in. One, two, three, four. Okay. 
Okay, so in total, I'm gonna need 12 cups of flour. I always stop before I have that amount of flour in. No matter what I'm making with flour, I always stop before I get to the total amount because you can always add more flour if you need it, but if you get too much flour in, you can't take it back out. So I have 11 cups of flour in, and now I'll just add about one fourth to one half cup of flour at a time until the dough looks right. So you can tell that this dough is still real sticky. So I decided last minute to make the this whole triple batch garlic breadstick. So I added two teaspoons of garlic powder. Okay, so one of the things when you're working with yeast dough is when you get to the amount of flour that the recipe calls for, um, and your dough is still sticky, like this is still sticky. Always do more kneading before you add more flour. So with this dough being like this, I'm gonna knead it for a good five minutes before I judge if I need to add more flour because more kneading and less flour will make a fluffier end product, a lighter and fluffier end product, where too much flour can make something real dense and more solid. So I'm gonna do more kneading, and now that I have my 12 cups of flour in here, I'm going to do more kneading before I decide if I need to add more flour. Okay, so after five minutes of kneading, my dough is still sticky. And the main reason, the number one reason I know I don't have enough flour is that the dough is still sticking to the side. I'll know I have enough flour when the bowl um, needs clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a half a cup more flour and then we're gonna knead it some more. So how do you know when your dough feels right? Um, there's certain things to check for like elasticity and smoothness and is it sticking to your bowl? But the biggest tip I can give you is it takes practice. If you make breadsticks, if you make a single batch and you make them once a week, in a month's time, you will know exactly what I'm talking about when I say you'll know when the dough feels right. So I'm gonna call this good. The dough looks nice and smooth. And it's, it's a little sticky, but that's the way this dough is going to be. And then I'm gonna work it a little bit by hand just to kind of get a feel of where I'm at with this dough. this up and we're going to trap in the moisture that's in there and we're going to set it down here on my heated floor and we're going to let it rise until it's double and while we wait for that dough to rise to double i am going to turn some cream into butter using my blender and I'm also gonna wash together some of these dishes. So 
So our dough has gotten good and ready while we made the butter and cleaned up the kitchen. Oh, I know what tool I forgot. So I'm using some melted tallow, um, but you can use olive oil or coconut oil or whatever oil you're most comfortable with using. I'm going to divide this dough into three sections because this is a triple batch. You could definitely use a scale to measure out your dough, um, but I am just going by what each section feels like this time. And then we're just going to flatten each piece of dough onto each baking sheet, making sure to keep them nice and even. And you can use a, a roller here if you want, but I just find it easier to use my hands. Now I'm gonna take my pizza cutter and I'm gonna cut them into strips. So now we are going to put them in the oven at 400 to 425 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes. While the breadsticks bake, we are going to grate some fresh cheese and melt some butter as toppings for the breadsticks. So one of the other things that we are doing while we wait for gardening season to get here is we are collecting and cooking maple sap for the first time ever. And it's actually been quite fun and it's given us all something to do while we impatiently wait for spring. And this is today's batch. So far, we have about one, two, three, about four gallons. And I am pleasantly surprised at how easy and fun it has been. I had a lot of people warn me that it's a lot of work, but we've found it a great pastime for the late winter. Okay, the breadsticks have been in for about 18 minutes and this is how I check to see if they're done. I just kind of pull them apart. I want to see them a little brown over the top. It looks like these could be about done.
So now that we've sprinkled them with cheese, we have put them in the oven under broil just for a few minutes to brown the cheese. And I brought my little stool and I sit right here because I will forget that they're in there and broil only takes less than a minute. See, there I did it, left them in too long. So as soon as they're cool enough to handle, I pull them apart. So these are the ones that I'll keep for our supper tonight and for the children's lunches the next few days. So then the ones that I wanna put in the freezer, I'm gonna pull apart in sheets. I'm gonna put them in Ziploc bags. And when you wanna put baked goods in the freezer, always put them in the very first day, the same day that you made them. As soon as they are cool or even cool enough to handle, that's when you wanna put them in the freezer because that will lock in all the best taste. So tonight we're preparing a supper to go with our breadsticks instead of the other way around. So we made a large pot of vegetable beef stew and the breadsticks are the perfect side dish.